Conte shutting down ABS CBN uh, News. Now he's giving a warning to uh, the telcos, the utilities. Really, what is the strategy of Duterte? Is he looking to expand his power? Well, on one hand, uh, you know, the numbers have been clear. Whenever the president attacked uh, the so-called oligarchs, whenever he pulled off that kind of populist uh, maneuver, it helped his numbers. In fact, it was around fourth quarter of last year when he attacked big business groups like the Ayalas and Pangilinans, who have major stake in the country's telecommunication. His number bumped up to net 80 plus percent, the highest on record in the Philippines, the highest on record, of course, for the president. So now with the COVID-19 crisis in the Philippines, by some measure, the worst in the region and the Philippines also suffering from one of the worst contractions or recessions in the region, perhaps the president is feeling that once again, he wants Wants to pull off that populist card and that might help his numbers because you know we still don't have satisfaction or approval ratings of the president for this year for some strange reason they're not releasing it the top agencies but if you look at proxy surveys like quality of life trend the numbers are worst on the record so it seems the president is sensing discontent and potential political backlash so he's reverting to the populist maneuver once again so given the economic malaise, how is his popularity doing? I mean, he came to power with a popular vote of about, I don't know, in, in terms of popularity at about 36 percent. That went to a record further down the road. Yeah. I mean, do the Filipinos now love or loathe him? <laughs> There are many things you have to look at. The first thing is there seems to be a correlation between average GDP growth rates and overall economic conditions on one hand and approval ratings of Filipino presidents. So if you look at history, President Aquino and President Duterte have had historically high approval ratings. You're talking about people with net uh, plus 50 approval ratings, which is significantly higher from all other previous presidents. If you look at the Fli Philippines economic growth rates, it has also been above average over the past 10 years, of course, with the exception of this year. So I believe there is some strong connection between the two. And in interestingly, in the case of President Duterte, the only time that there was a significant dip in his approval ratings of around 12 percent, that was when the inflation hit around 7, 8 percent in November of 2018. So it seems President Duterte, if he's vulnerable on anything, he doesn't seem to be vulnerable on human rights issues, on his tensions with U.S. or on his controversial relations with China. But it seems on macroeconomic issues, he seems to be a little bit vulnerable. So my hunch is his numbers are significantly lower. And by the way, a lot of people would also tell you, can we really trust those approval ratings because they're in a climate of fear? So just in a webinar the other week, I asked the head of the Philippine Social Weather Station, one of the leading uh, poll agencies here, I asked him, Mr. Mangas, I asked him, uh, is the factor of fear a possible contribution to his historical high number in the past? He could not deny that. So I think we have to take his numbers also with some grain of salt. And I suppose his numbers are significantly lower right now. And by the way, that's very important because in a year from now, as unless there's some 11th hour constitutional change or coup, the Philippines is going to move towards the next presidential elections. You see, if his numbers are not good now, that will affect his ability, undercut his ability to put a preferred successor, either his daughter or his longtime aide, Senator Bongo, as his successor. And this matters because the Philippines, similar to South Korea, is a country that is very brutal to ex-presidents. And Duterte has made a lot of enemies in the Philippines and around the world. So he's going to watch out for what's going to happen after 2022. That's why it matters what he does in the next coming months and if he can regain the public trust of the people. So I think there's also an element of quite desperation there for the president to regain the plus trust of people. So I'm not surprised that he got quite personal and is once again back at attacking the so-called oligarchs in the country. But Richard, you know, with the, the virus there approaching something like 100,000 cases, has his handling of COVID-19 really been responsible for this decline in its popularity, ultimately? Yeah, I think it's definitely a combination of, you know, the economic crisis and also the COVID-19 handling. I mean, initially, President Duterte is similar to almost all populists around the world, possibly with the exception of Viktor Orban in Hungary, was very dismissive towards the crisis. That was the case for Duterte up until second week of March. 
And then by the third week of March, he was absolutely singing to a radically different tune. So while President Trump, President Bolsonaro, a lot of populists around the world have, have been pushing for reopening of the economy, President Duterte went in a diametrically opposed, opposite direction. So the Philippines right now has one of the longest and strictest lockdowns. According, according to IMF, at one point, 75 percent of the Philippine economy was shut down. And by some estimates, the Philippines is having one of the slowest recovery in the quarter three and the GDP could shrink by almost 7%. Possibly it could even get worse depending on how we perform in the coming months as we try to adjust the numbers. So this is going to be the worst economic contraction since the final years of the Marcos dictatorship. The worst numbers possibly in half a century. I'm having a hard time to see whether President Duterte can still have historically high approval ratings that he used to have, assuming those numbers were really reflecting of sentiments on the ground. Okay, well, uh, Richard, let's assume that the uh, sentiment on the ground is very dismissive of him. And when it comes to the election coming up in a couple of years, who do you think uh, likely to be with the favoured candidates of the people? In other words, who's likely to win? Yeah, I think depending on how the economic recovery goes, which is not very good. And by the way, four months into this crisis, the president is yet to come up with a consolidated stimulus package or recovery package. I mean, the U.S. Congress criticized for political paralysis has passed several rounds of that already, not in the case of the Philippines. I think depending on that, this will strengthen the hand of a person who has a combination of, let's say, business acumen and governance efficacy, and at the same time, an element of populist charisma. I think after President Duterte of the Philippines, like many democracies around the world, are not going to be the same. I think you need to have a certain degree of outside-the-box uh, rhetoric or try to present yourself as authentic. So some element of Dutertismo will be there. But the next leader, I think, will be someone who will say, hey, you know what? We tried Duterte with all his tough talk. We tried the liberals with all their human rights. You need someone else. And that person is someone who has entrepreneurial and governance skills. Someone who's really competent and decisive. So that could pave the way for a number of other candidates which are not given enough attention. So that's where it gets interesting. And of course, people are talking about one person, potentially Manny Villar, the richest man in the Philippines right now, who happens to be also friendly with the president. He used to be a senator. He ran for the presidency back in 2010, on, uh, but he was unfortunately at the last minute when Aquino joined the race, he was able to you know, bring home the bacon. But Manny Villar could be, make a strong case to run for the presidency next year. And his wife actually also topped the Senate race last year. So the Villars are in a top position to run for presidency. So is the young and charismatic mayor of Manila, who has been praised for his uh, effective handling of not only COVID-19 crisis, but a lot of crisis in, in Manila City. And he also has a very strong populist charisma, a young progressive leader. So these are, I think, the people are going to have a lot of traction in the year or the years to come when it comes to the post-COVID-19 and post-Duterte political landscape.